right. Uh, so there is this movie, and it's called Spider-Man 2, with uh, the one with Tobey Maguire. came out in 2004. I love that movie a lot. Uh, there's this scene where he's uh, trying to save a bunch of people on a train, and the train is like basically broken, and it's like bulleting down the track, and it's going to like run off the rails if he doesn't stop it, basically. And he's standing in front of the train as it's going down, and he's throwing out, whipping out his webs, and, and he's holding them all, and he's trying to keep the train, trying to slow down the train, keep it from going off the rails. And as he's doing this, his suit is like ripping, and he's making this really ugly face because he's in like so much pain. And he puts his feet out into the track and trying to like slow things down, and he's just holding everything to get together, trying to save all of these lives. And that was basically me growing up in life and basically was my whole life up until recently. My parents divorced when I was four years old. I don't have any memories of an intact family. I don't know what it was like having a mom and dad together in the same, in the same house. We were living in Illinois. We moved out to California. And when we, when, when we moved out, everyone, everyone split. Um, I went with my dad, lived with him, and my sister, who's older than me, her name's Morgan, and she's special needs. She went to go live with my mom. Now, that arrangement wasn't, wasn't totally ideal because my mom is also, uh, she suffers from bipolar one and schizophrenia. So she can't always look after my sister. And miss, my sister obviously can't look after my mom. And I was always kind of called on to have the answers for everything and to, to take care of the family. And it was, I felt like it was my duty and my job to basically be the hero and save the day all the time when it needed saving, I guess. <laughs> and there was one time I remember where I went to my mom's for Thanksgiving. I would go visit her on weekends and holidays. And um, I went to go visit her and caught her in the middle of a, uh, an episode that she was going through. And I just knew I had to get my sister out of there. Um, I was 14. So that was fun. Um, I just had to get her out of there because it was not a safe environment. And uh, being a 14-year-old kid, I, I packed a little bag in a, in a BB gun. I don't know what the hell I was going to do with a BB gun, but I, I, it saved me from something. I don't know. It was like a $30 BB gun from Big Five. I don't know what I was thinking. But I was 14. I didn't know what to do. And, and I, so I, I took my sister and we just walked down the hill because my mom was, lives up on the top of a hill. And it was really late. Um, we were supposed to have this night of family, and, and it ended not that, like that. <laughs> and we walked down this hill, and uh, I didn't know who to call. The people that dropped me off knew that my mom was in an episode and left immediately and just left us alone. Um, and we got to the bottom of the hill, and I couldn't call my dad because he was in New York at the time. Um, I, had to, I had to call uh, an old nanny of mine. Thank God she picked up. She drove an hour and a half to come pick us up. And there was lots of moments like that growing up. And I was always kind of searching for love and affection that I didn't have growing up because I just didn't have that intact family or a mom. And one way I knew I could get some sort of love and affection was by having a girlfriend. <laughs> and um, I always kind of wanted to have a girlfriend. And I didn't like being single. I didn't like being alone. I, um, always felt like I was hungry for that love and affection sort of thing. And um, it got pretty depressing at times because I didn't know who I was and I didn't know how to take care of myself and I didn't know how to be happy. Um, I didn't know if I mattered to anyone else. Um, found myself a couple times on the, on the roof of my house um, feeling like I should jump. Um, but didn't, I'm here. <laughs> and uh, there was this one girl um, I was on and off with for about six years. Um, and when we were off, uh, we were best friends. And she was everything to me for a long period of time. And it all ended when she cheated on me, which was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the love and affection I really needed. Uh, <laughs> And um, that really sucked. And that, that was the moment when I threw up my hands. I threw them up and I was like, that's it. I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't live for other people. I can't 
be constantly searching for this love and affection that, that I know I, I can't have in this way. And I made the decision to take a year and a half to basically be, to be single and to find out what made me happy. And I figured out that going to see movies three times a week was huge for me. It's a lot cheaper than therapy and I enjoyed it a lot more. Um, and it really made me happy. And I spent almost every single day with uh, uh, my best friend and surrounded myself with the things that really mattered and that made me happy. And, and uh, I'm in a band and we went on our first cross country tour during that time. And being in that kind of mindset and going on that tour really opened up my mind to so many things. And one of those things was how, how I'm gonna be happy and how I'm gonna focus on myself um, and then at the end of that time, this new girl came in to my life and she, um, was awesome and I really liked her a lot and she really liked me. Uh, but we, uh, I told her, I said, I'm kind of going through this time in my life. It's, uh, you know, I'm, I don't really want to get into a relationship and, and she was like, okay with that sort of, you know, and, um, we just kind of dated for a little while. And she had actually given me a key to her apartment. Um, and I remember at one point uh, she told me, she said, I, I can't just date you anymore. I want to be in like a real relationship. And she, um, that, really, that really freaked me out. That really scared me. So I like took some time off and like didn't really talk to her for like two weeks. Um, and then at the end of those two weeks, I... I hit her up and I said, can we meet at like a Starbucks? And so I met her at a Starbucks and she told me, if you don't want to be in a relationship, I want my key back. And I remember holding the key in my hand, kind of flipping it, knowing what I wanted to do, but being really uncertain because I'd spent a year and a half of my, uh, of my life finally being properly happy with myself, for myself, for the first time in my life. And it was really scary to think about taking that leap of faith and going back to having a girlfriend and and being scared that I would go back to my old ways or not be happy anymore. But I decided to take that leap of faith anyway. And now I've been in that relationship for, for three years and it's still going. And she's right over there. 